All right, pre-trib rapture moment number seven. What about Corey Tenboom? This is one of the ones that a lot of people will cite that are for the post-trib movement. They try to say that because Corey Tenboom went through the Nazi death camps, you know, that she was a real Christian martyr and she saw her sister die and everything else. And so because she believed in a post-trib rapture, she did not, she was very much against the pre-trib rapture. So a lot of people will point to her as one of the proofs, the great foundations of post-trib theology. Well, uh, how about we pit her against a Jew, an Orthodox Jew that was actually in, the, in the, the real death camps and actually was in one of those piles of dead bodies that you see the pictures of from the Holocaust and actually escaped and lived to tell about it, got saved and uh, called into the ministry. It was actually a King James Bible believing saved Jew, a Christian. Pretty amazing. You say, who is this man? Ben David Liu. And uh, just an amazing testimony. You can find some of his stuff online. I know uh, Berean Beacon has, I think, his testimony. It's very hard to, to hear because it's not real clear and, and it was recorded a long time ago. And uh, Ben David Liu, was, he's Jewish and he's also from Poland, so he has a real heavy accent. But uh, you can also get the recordings from Bible Baptist Bookstore down in Pensacola, Florida. And you can listen to four different studies. I'm going to play a little bit of those studies today. And I'm going to show you that you can go through horrible times and see martyrdom. And Ben's, Ben David Liu, his whole family was killed. He was the only one that survived. So don't say, well, he didn't know what suffering was. Yeah, he did. He certainly did. But uh, let's look at some of Corey Ten Boom and the rapture. Okay, it says here, I'll show it on screen, it says, There are some among us teaching there will be no tribulation, that the Christians will be able to escape all this. These are the false teachers that Jesus was warning us to expect in the latter days. Let me just stop there for a minute. You see, one of the big games that's played with the post-tribbers is they'll use the term, the tribulation, making the person believe that this term, the tribulation, is the real description for this coming seven-year time period. It's not. Okay, the term the tribulation is never used as a title for the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven year period. It says there shall be great tribulation after the tribulation of those days. See, it's always descriptive of the time period. It's never a title. So what she says there is false. There are some among us teaching there will be no tribulation. That's not true. Okay, no, no pre-trib rapture believer would teach that. But let's continue here. She goes on to say, In China, the Christians were told, Don't worry, before the tribulation comes, you will be translated, raptured. Then came a terrible persecution. Millions of Christians were tortured to death. Later, I heard a bishop from China say, Sadly, we have failed. We should have made the people strong for persecution rather than, than telling them Jesus would come first. Tell the people how to be strong in times of persecution, how to stand when the tribulation comes, to stand and not faint. What we have here, and I'm sorry, I, I believe Corey Ten Boom was a saved woman. I believe that she was a godly woman, but she was very ignorant of the scriptures. And I say that with all mercy and all charity and everything else. She was ignorant of the scriptures. Okay? What they do, because of this confusion, they say the tribulation, and then they say persecution. We don't teach. Pre-tribbers do not teach that persecution is not going to happen to the body of Christ. I'd be ignorant if I told that. All right, look at church history. The Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, has persecuted Christians, Bible-believing Christians, for well over a thousand years. And it's still going on today, too, by the way, so don't think, oh, it's just in the past. It still goes on. Real, true Bible-believing Christians are persecuted. They have tribulation in this life. But they do not go through the time of Jacob's trouble. And they're calling it here the Great Tribulation. We aren't going through that. Now I'm going to show you a real big boo-boo that Corey Ten Boom makes here. I mean, this is real bad. She says here, I feel I have a divine mandate to go and tell the people of this world that it is possible to be strong in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, a divine mandate. We are in training for the tribulation. Yeah? 
but more than 60% of the body of Christ across the world has already entered into the tribulation. There is no way to escape it. We are next. Really? She spoke this back in 1974. So from 1974 to 2013, we've been in the Great Tribulation. No. She's very, very deceived. Okay? And, and you know, okay, I, I think that there are women, Christian women, that can go out there and they can tell their testimony. She had a great testimony. Tell people about that. Tell them, warn them about persecution coming to the church. That's fine. But when you have a woman starting to take up the, the role of a pastor, starting to take up the role of preaching and teaching here to men and women both, and going out, I have a divine mandate to go out and warn people about the pre-trib rapture. No, you don't. And what happens is, people get outside of the will of God, and then they start making a mess of the Bible. And that's what Corey Ten Boom did. I'm real sorry if you worship the woman. She's not perfect. And she made a serious boo-boo there. Don't tell me we've been in the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, since 1974. I don't buy that. You know, my brains work a little bit better than that. I mean, give me a break. But let's continue. Down here she says, another paragraph, she says, In America the churches sing, let the congregation escape tribulation. Really? I don't remember ever singing that. But in China and Africa the tribulation has already arrived. In 1974. What? Goes on to say, we continue right on as though we are all going to escape the tribulation. Well, if you're talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, yeah, we are going to escape that. The rapture, the body of Christ leaves before the Antichrist is revealed, before this time of Jacob's trouble. It's for Jacob, not the church. To say that thing over and over and over again. But I'm going to show you one of the reasons why Corey Ten Boom was a little bit messed up doctrinally. Okay? She says here in this paragraph, Each of us needs our own personal Pentecost. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh boy. The Pentecostal charismatic movement is one of the most scripturally unsound, just, it's bad. She says, we will never be able to stand in the tribulation without it. In the coming persecution, we must be ready to help each other and encourage each other. But we must not wait until the tribulation comes before starting. The fruit of the Spirit should be the dominant force of every Christian's life. Many are fearful of the coming tribulation. They want to run. I too am a little bit afraid when I think that after all my 80 years, including the horrible Nazi concentration camp, that I might have to go through the tribulation also. Huh? I thought she said 60% of the world's already in the tribulation. Um, I thought the Bible teaches that the Antichrist, that the false prophet causes the whole world to worship the beast. I thought the Antichrist gets power over the whole world. Not 60%. You know? Uh, this woman's a bit confused. And to set her up on this pinnacle of, of, oh, she's this holy to be revered woman and not be questioned because she helps us prove, disprove the pre trib rapture, you're quite foolish to take this woman's words and disprove a Bible doctrine like the pre trib rapture. Very, very bad. But now let's listen to Ben David Liu. Dr. Ben David Liu, okay, he was a very intelligent man, a Jewish rabbi before he got saved. Now let's listen to his testimony. Now this is from a recording, one of his things that he did, called Prophecies of the Antichrist. Okay, And I'm going to play four different parts. The first one is about 2 minutes and 30 seconds in. The second one is about 13 minutes in. Then about 25 minutes in. And then about 33 minutes into the thing. Okay, So I have them just back to back. We're not going to take a break in between them. I want you to listen to these. Okay, Here they are. I'd like to give you the scriptures as we bring down, I told you yesterday. We're going to turn to Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, 25, 26 is being fulfilled. 27 is of the Antichrist, and he will be not going to reveal himself till after the rapture. 
And from the Garden of Eden, you know, the devil always wanted to be God. And as soon as the rapture takes place, it's going for a little while because, you know, he's going to be God the Father. The Antichrist is God the Son. And the false prophet is taken like the Holy Spirit. He is a sturdy. That's not going to last long. <laughs> Our Trinity is forever and ever and ever. Everything God is is forever and ever and ever. Fellowshipping one with the other. And the church, you know, as soon as the rapture takes place, the church is gone. And then the Gospel of Matthew tells us, and I was reading last night some scriptures, the sun is not going to give a light. Can you imagine your vegetation, what would be? The moon wouldn't give a light. Stars would fall from heaven. The earth will be burned. It will be a terrible, it would be even worse than I had by Hitler six years. During the tribulation time. If you love your loved ones, and you really love him, and if the rapture takes place, can you imagine that you are going to heaven and you leave your loved ones, you're never going to see him again? And the time is coming. We don't have to give dates, we don't have to give years, but the Bible predicts and it's coming to fulfillment. When we see all those things happening. That's why we should have more burden for souls because we don't have much time. I believe if all the fundamental Christians would be united in King James Version instead of fighting by the Rockman or many others because there's not much time for fighting. There's time to winning souls and to love one another and to pray one for another because Jesus didn't tell us to go fight. He said, if you love me, love one another. And we don't have much time to play. We have time, it's time to work because Jesus is coming. Pretty interesting, huh? So is it possible for a Christian martyr that goes through Nazi death camps to come out and still believe in a pre-trib rapture? Oh yeah. And Ben David Liu, I would say, knew the Bible a whole lot better than Corey Ten Boom. And Ben David Liu was a man that was called to preach. And he led a lot of Jews to salvation, Orthodox Jews. Okay, But he said there in the third part, fellowshipping one with the other, in the church, you know, as, the rapture, as soon as the rapture takes place, the church is gone. You say, well, I don't know if it was really sure for sure there that, you know, uh, he believed in a pre-trib rapture. Of course he did. Ben David Liu in that study taught that the church is removed before the Antichrist shows up. Ben David Liu knew the scriptures. Corey Tenboom did not.